Designing a system from the ground up can be an enormous challenge. Great platforms like the Raspberry Pi and others have helped embedded engineers speed development and quickly build proof of concepts for very low cost, but are they the right solutions for production and when is the right time to buy an off-the-shelf system on a module versus a full chip-down design? Embedded engineering has become as much about our firmware and software as it is about the hardware today. And you know, I think we've seen that really grow exponentially over the course of the last decade or maybe more. As our applications need to get more and more complex, uh, the good news is that we've seen a lot of great processors and Cortex-A based processors from companies like NXP uh, with their IdenMX family, Renesis with their RZ family, ST with their MP1 family, and many others uh, come and help us with those designs with great free operating system options uh, with Linux uh, builds for Ubuntu, Yocto, and others, uh, which really allow for a lot of exciting possibilities for us as engineers um, and make some of that software portion of our design a lot easier because the drivers for our Wi-Fi, for our cameras, um, for our Ethernet are already built into those builds. But when we do the hardware side, we still have to deal with a processor that's got a ball grid array package, probably a lot of pins to it. You're dealing with multi-layer boards, breakouts, um, you know, having to deal with uh, the timing issues between the processor and memory, and a lot of complexity that goes into that layout. And we've been helped a lot by that with the advent um, of a lot of system on a modules and single board computers, things like the Raspberry Pi and others that have done a lot of that hardware for us, allow us to do proof of concepts and in some cases actually take a product to production without having to do a lot of the hardware engineering ourselves. The question we now have is, when does it make sense to use a SOM or an SBC or when do we need to move and do our own chip down design with these processor based embedded applications? Today, I have the privilege of speaking with Ed Baca, who works for Future Electronics uh, Intelligence Systems Group um, and is a great resource for us as one of our regional solutions managers for the central United States, based out of Austin, Texas, here with me. Uh, a little, to want to talk a little bit with you, Ed, about what engineers need to be considering when they're looking at SOMs and SBCs, what we're seeing in the market, and, and really couldn't thank you enough for being here with me today. Hello, Todd, and thanks for welcoming me to this pro segment. Absolutely, absolutely, thanks a lot. Um, so <clears throat> how are some of the ways, you know, I kind of mentioned it a little bit at the beginning, but what are some of the ways that single board computers and system on a modules are helping embedded engineers today get their designs completed in a more timely manner than maybe we've been able to in the past? Well, as you know, the SOMs contain a processor, a memory subsystems, even power management, timing, and connectivity. And this is the brain to any of the embedded systems that our customers are building. And the good thing about a SOM or an SBC is you'll receive a working good sample. You know, we, it's fully tested. And uh, an SBC has multiple connectors for connection directly to I.O. cables, a display, and a power supply, where, you know, both SOMs and SBC comes fully tested. And we can even deliver uh, customer-specific software installed as an added benefit. And yeah. they allow the customer to get a product through to the final test phase of their design faster than a chip down design because they're starting with something that's known to work. And the customers can begin loading their customized software within a few minutes, and then they can take that product and fit it to their product needs. As you mentioned, the MPUs are so complex these days that it's really difficult to get uh, the memory components and all the other high speed interfaces perfectly on the first pass yeah. of a PCB. So, you know, when you start with an SBC or a SOM, you give our customers a head start. Yeah, and that's incredibly powerful. I mean, if you can go through and do that proof of concept without having to spin a single board, um, I think that's an amazing way to get your design off the ground and running. Um, you know, because again, if you're going to do that, that you know, try and do your own layout and send that off to the board house, you're probably going to have to pay for a respin, um, you know, for something uh, along the way. And, and it really does make a lot of sense to go that route. 
you know, we, we've certainly seen, you know, we've got some great options on our line card that we represent, um, you know, for SOMs and SBCs. We've seen Raspberry Pi as a great product on the market for this as well. Not one that we carry, but they're, they're a tough competitor. And, and, and some of the price points that they hit um, on those Raspberry Pis, you can buy a Raspberry Pi for, I think I've seen like $29. It's got the processor. It's got a Wi-Fi module. It's got, you know, Ethernet and, and a lot of other complex things on board. Um you know, for that price point, if you were to do a chip down option, that can be hard to really hit uh, as well. What when does it really make sense for an embedded engineer to be looking at, um, you know, using a single board computer, a SOM, as opposed to that chip down? Well, that's a good question. And, you know, with our uh, customers having uh, reduced engineering resources, they may not have uh, the staff that's really built for everything that they need for a chip down design. And so we're seeing that in our uh, experience, if a customer is gonna have a product that's 5K pieces or, or less annually, it's really good fit for an SBC. And when you take a SOM, which is the soft, you know, the smaller subset of the heart of the SBC, it really makes sense if their volumes are around 10K or lower. But once that product gets to be about 10K or higher, we found that it really makes sense for them to go to a chip down design because they can really reduce their costs. Yeah, and I think you also get a lot more control over the size of the board. Um, you know, make sure you get just the peripherals that you need for your application and reducing some costs there. And so I think there's a lot of that goes into that that makes it make sense to go chip down. But you know, for a lot of our customers, it is a 5,000 to 10,000 piece build, especially with us doing so much work with it with industrial uh, engineers. Um, you know, that, that's a great way to go and makes those designs a lot easier. You know, I, I talked a little bit about the Raspberry Pi before, and we get a lot of calls from customers looking for replacements for the Raspberry Pi. Um, you know, some I, we have seen customers use and take the Raspberry Pi to production um, and like I said with the price points that, that it can hit that can be very very um, you know enticing uh, option for for engineers to go down uh, what challenges do exist though for a customer uh, engineer that's looking for a Raspberry Pi to take that to production are there some pitfalls that engineers be, need to be aware of you know Todd that's a great question because I've seen so many of these requests over the last oh, 10 months or so the, the Raspberry Pi ecosystem is really great for an evaluation and kind of a small quantity prototype avenue. But we've had customers go to production with the Raspberry Pi and now they can't get them. Uh, they don't offer a lot of other things that our suppliers do, such as customization. And if you're in a ruggedized uh, environment, they don't offer a solder down version or x86 options. So when right. we can offer uh, customization of flash and RAM and some of the I.O. features. Let's say on an SBC, um, you're not using, if a customer's not using all of their I.O., we can actually choose to depopulate some of the connectors and thus save costs overall in the long run. And we also offer, most of our customers, our, our suppliers offer a 10 to 15 year longevity program. And we have the continuity of supply and our suppliers do with their end manufacturers that we can guarantee that once we get orders in place, we will be able to deliver. Yeah, yeah, no question. And that's definitely a powerful thing. And that customization as well, um, you know, from a lot of the SOM module vendors out there that are building those SOMs to go into production level quantities. Um, that customization is incredibly powerful. It seems like most of our customers using SOMs want some level of customization to reduce costs, to fit their application, to fit their needs. That's been amazing. Um, you know, one of the things that I, that I do love about the Raspberry Pi is, is the community that they built. I think that's actually the most powerful piece of their hardware is that Raspberry Pi community is absolutely amazing. Um, and, and just engineers working together in collaboration in a lot of cases um, has been a really, really cool thing. But outside of that, if you need support for a Raspberry Pi design, what are the options that you have in that? And then, you know, flip side, um, you know, I think the SOM vendors that we sell, they don't have that power of community. Where do you get your answers from the vendors that we do have on our line card? You know, the Raspberry Pi users forum is really great. And if 
they've built up a, a huge ecosystem of uh, you know, questions and answers. But let's say a customer has a specific question or needs help beyond what they can find on the forum. There, there really isn't an avenue that gives them the answers that they're really looking for or even yeah. holds them to the next you know, part of their bringing their board up where if you're using one of our SOM or SBC suppliers, you can utilize our MPU specialists. Right. And with, you know, they can help with the software and also hardware questions and help bring a board up, whether it's the evaluation board or the, the customer's final board. And the good thing about our suppliers, they're constantly putting out peripheral uh, drivers as the Linux and Windows updates come out they're updating the drivers on their website. Right, right. And, and that's incredibly powerful to constantly have that support, constantly have, um, you know, over the life cycle of that SOM, um, you know, new drivers coming out, staying up to date with the latest Linux builds um, and everything along those lines is, is a really, really powerful thing. If you're going to be in a production with that hardware platform for a significant period of time, even, you know, a couple of years, one year, two years, um, that can be a powerful thing that sometimes some of the other solutions on the market can't really offer, uh, which I think is really incredible. Um, where do you see the applications today with embedded engineers where a SOM or an SBC is best suited to be utilized for? Well, and I've seen uh, drones and robotics as the major applications. Mm -hmm. Now, these drones can be, I, we have applications in the central for aerial drones as well as land-based drones and robotics. Uh, the other really big uh, application is medical equipment. And this can range from a mobile cart, such as a nursing station, up to a large complex diagnostic equipment. We've seen the benefit of SBCs and SOMs in that medical, uh, that medical space. And the other is artificial intelligence, because when you need a huge, fast processing power, yeah. you typically are going to get and need a, an MPU that can handle it. And, you know, artificial intelligence for crowd control uh, and different things, as well as visual inspection for high-speed conveyors and assembly systems, really makes sense for an SBC or a SOM because they have the processing power that's known to work and they can go to market quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've definitely seen a lot of that. Um, you know, if you get into, you know, some of these multi-core processors on board the SOMs that we have, you can run your neural network. You can do some very complex algorithms for AI um, or machine learning at the local level and not have to send all your data up onto a server uh, on the other side of the cloud to do that complex uh, you know, algorithm and make those decisions and then send the, the decision that's been made back so the device can react. Um, being able to do that locally is really, really powerful for a lot of the applications that we're working on. So, you know, we, we've kind of talked about, you know, some of the options that are out there for SOMs and SBCs. We've talked about, you know, our friends at Raspberry Pi and what they're doing. Um, you know, for future standpoint, what are some of the SOMs and SBCs that we represent and where can embedded engineers go for more information uh, on that offering? So we have great suppliers such as Technexian, Aon, Advantech, Cairo, CompuLab, iWave, and there's many others. And, and the best place to start, I think, is to contact your local FIS RSM for your region because these SBCs and SOMs are based on Intel and AMD x86 platforms, uh, even NVIDIA. Uh, we have, of course, the ARM NPU suppliers, like you mentioned, NXP's i.mx and Layerscape, as well as the RZ yeah. family from Renesis, uh, MP1 from ST Micro and uh, microchip SAM A series. So we actually have a, uh, an embedded solutions page on the future R Solutions website, and that's a great place to start as well. Yeah, and hopefully that's a great resource for everybody to kind of get an idea. Um, you know, so one question, and hopefully this isn't too much of a curveball for you, but it just occurred to me a little bit as we were talking here. Um, you know, I, I think, again, uh, kind of coming back to the pricing that we see on the market for some of these SOMs uh, that are on the market today. Uh, how do the how does the pricing for the SOMs that we represent compare to that? Um, you know, and, and, and I, I think your, your answer is probably going to be it's a little more expensive, a little bit, um, you know, not, not insanely more expensive. 
how do we justify that extra cost compared to what's on the market for uh, for some customers? Well, that's where, you know, I have seen um, sub $30 uh, SOM uh, prices for customers in our in the central region. But yeah. we offer, uh, you know, many things that a full valued distributor offers. I mean, we offer everything from returns, uh, stocking programs, and we have the technical support to back it up. And we can get, uh, once the production volume gets larger, we can reduce those uh, quantities because of supply chain issues. And, and we're, we're really seeing that, that the benefit of a full volume distributor is really where our customers want to be because they don't want to get caught out in the rain, as it were, with uh, Raspberry Pi as they have in the past. Right, right. Well, I think more than just distribution in that side, also just from the standpoint of, um, you know, yes, some of the, the suppliers that we represent may be more expensive than some of those sub $30 solutions that are sometimes online. It's, like you said, some of our solutions also will get sub $30. Uh, which I think is phenomenal. Uh, but I think it, a big part of it comes down to the longevity um, and the ability to continue to get product, um, you know, over time and get that customization. Uh, I think a lot of times justifies the extra couple of dollars that you may spend uh, for a distribution supported uh, vendor um, for the saw modules that you might be using in your better design. So always, uh, always something I think we as embedded engineers have to take into consideration when we're looking at how we want to architect our system um, and what SOM modules might make sense for us in full production design. So, Ed, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to speak to me. Um, you know, I, I think the, the value that you and, and the FIS team bring to engineers who are looking at SOM modules, looking at embedded processors, looking at FPGAs, um, is absolutely tremendous in helping engineers get to market faster, uh, figure out the right direction to go from day one, um, and, and get to the finish line uh, more quickly uh, with a low cost, um, you know, best possible solution available. So really appreciate you bringing that uh, to the table. Thank you so much for our audience for joining us on this episode of The Current. We hope that you got something out of this conversation um, and really appreciate your continued support of the podcast. Uh, if you have any questions at all about SOM modules, SBCs, or anything else about embedded designs or electrical engineering designs that you may be working on, we'd love uh, for our engineering team to be there to help you. Please reach out to us at shapingthefuture at future.ca. Again, shapingthefuture at future.ca um, or shapingthefuture at futureelectronics.com. Uh, if you want to use a little few more keystrokes there, that works too. Uh, but we really appreciate your time and we'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode.